Hi everyone and welcome back. So we will continue today on our chocolate split project. But we're going to take a detour in here because if you remember from last uh, from the last video, we had this sort of issue and depending on on the seed you we might have several of them. So in this case, I want to take a different approach on creating this interior surface. So <clears throat> As you remember, we resampled the, the curves, the unshared edges, I mean, and then we skinned the shape. So, instead of this explode Z, I don't know if I covered that, but if we have a look in here, and at the glass attribute, as you can see, the pink is on the left, and if we pack, and transfer the glass and do the exploded view and as you can see the pink is on the left but previously I was doing plus equals so this would invert as you can see so make sure you do it uh, you revert it so that's fine now <clears throat> we do the skinning and let's check the normals in this case I want to reverse afterwards and also I don't want to fuse right now and I can get rid of most of these. So I'm going to calculate the connectivity. So let's check that class attribute. Yeah, that's working. And we can leave the rest for now. So let's move this down, actually. All right. Now, first of all, the idea <clears throat> is to calculate normals pointing out like you do in a, with an oriental on curve but in this case we have geometry so we have to find another way and calculate those normals and then ray project it to to the surface to the original surface but before we calculate those normals it will be a good idea to flatten this mesh and then at the end we can deform it back so let's get rid of this and save these as all three. <clears throat> and we can come come back to this one in here. And let's do in here a wrangle. Let's make sure we have the class attributes, which we do. So we could do the following. To move them, to flatten them. So we will do we will read the class attribute from the frame, so frame 0, class i at frame num. Then we can get the bounding box center, so vector center, to be equal to get the box center, and we will read it using the class attribute, so we will constrain it to the class, so let class plus i to a class. And now we can just do v at p dot z, it will be equal to center z. And we get, if we don't look at the normals, we get the flattened version as you can see. So that's fine. Now we know we need to do the same for the other part. So for that, I'm gonna copy this. So let's just say flatten z. And let's copy it over. And we need to calculate the connectivity first, because we will need it for this. And let's do the same in here, but get the bounding box from the input one. So this will be more correct, this way it will be aligned properly. Alright, now we have this geometry in here, and we want to calculate the, the normals or an out vector pointing away from the, these vertical edges. We can do an orient along curve and calculate in this case the out. Let's set this as normal and visualize that. So make sure. But as you can see, this won't give us a great result because this is geometry. So let's try to calculate these ourselves. So let's create a wrangle and I'm gonna set it to all alternate direction 
and what we can do <clears throat> is that if we can get this edge and the source and the destination point we can calculate a vector and then use a sign to make it point out and make it point in on this side so for that i'm going to use the the concept of alp edges in vex so the first thing is i'm going to get the primitive edge or the the alpha edge from from a prim so prim alpha edge will be equal to prim edge prim edge and i'm just gonna get it from the prim num so that's our first step and i happen to know that i want the previous one so prim edge it will be equal to edge prim and we get that uh, prime edge in here. So that's fine. Now we want to grab the the start and the end point of that edge. So this one and this one. So for that I'm gonna get in start it will be equal to edge source point. And I'm gonna grab it from the prime edge. And I want to do the same for the endpoint, so destination point. Now I'm gonna grab the position of those points and just calculate the direction. So if I do vector v1, it will be equal to point. I wanna get the position. And the point will be the start point. And I'm gonna do for the same for the end. And it will be P2. Now, what can we do? We can calculate the direction. So, vector there will be equal to normalize P1 minus P2. And if we assign this to an attribute and visualize that, so there, make sure we set it as vector and we actually visualize it and decrease but as you can see both are pointing in and i need those outer edge to point out so we can actually create a sign in here so after this we can say int sign and we can say so i at ptnum is bigger than the end because in this case if we check that, the, um, <clears throat> the point numbers on the outside part are smaller than the inside. So we can do this and then to have a zero centered offset, we can, or negative one and one, we can multiply it by two and subtract one. And now we can just, uh, let's see, multiply this by the sign and we get the desired result. As you can see, the normals are, are pointing correctly for this attribute. All right, now what's next? Then, as you can see, at this point, we have uh, we have un un uh, uh, points over each other. So we can do a fuse and it will be okay now. So now it comes the loop where we subdivide and reproject this uh, little by little. So let's make sure on this end where we have the original geometry so we convert it to line then I'm gonna do uh, an iris sample so in this case 1e 05s or 0.01 something like that so quite a bit and resemble by polygon edge and then fuse and then I'm gonna do a sweep and I'm gonna set it to ribbon and set it to x-axis I believe yeah and make sure we decrease this quite a bit so just to have the surface to collide with <clears throat> now if we do a ray and we need to make sure we select first the unshared so unshared points and we do a array to this surface and in here we need to 
make sure we set something. So first of all, we don't want the normal. We want uh, an attribute, which is called there. And we need to set a max distance, a smaller max distance, so 0.01. We also need to set it to bidirectional. So let's see. Bidirectional, that's correct. So let's actually disable this and see if that makes any difference. So there, bidirectional, and we want to select only the unshared. So let's just make sure this is colliding with the surface. And we also need to try to subdivide it a bit first. As you can see, it's working, but we need to do this in a loop. So first of all, we need to subdivide and then do the unshared. So let's create a feedback loop. And we will connect this in here and this one in here. So let's organize this a bit, pressing A. So we take the geometry, we subdivide it, we select the unshared and we reproject it. Let's make sure we only set this to 3 or something. And as you can see, it's already working much better. But I want to do some other things in here. So first of all, I want to attribute blur the dir attribute. And I'm going to set the blurring durations to 5 and don't pin border points. As you can see, it's already working much better in this corner. And I also want to blur the geometry so let's increase this to four and we might notice some issue oops we might notice some issues let me see if i can find it so right now i can't find any issues but just in case we can place an attribute blur and we will blur the position quite a bit so by about 100 so we get these a more, a more even distribution and make sure we we set this to edge length also uh, mainly it's uh, on these edges some of the loops start to accumulate and then the unshared points are more more inside than the the interior ones so it starts to collapse on itself so that's what i'm trying to avoid in there so let's set this to four and we've basically done in here so now we have the correct collision as you can see you can can see how this starts evolving so i'm gonna set it to four that's fine and now we can simply do a surface deform so let's do a surface deform make sure we don't treat this as subdivision surface and we want to deform this and the geometry the let's see the rest so the rest surface will be this one in here no yeah it will be this one so let's create an all in here and object merge so this will be the rest surface and the deformed one can be this one Uh, in here. So we have the geometry to be deformed, which is this flattened surface. Then we have the the rest and the deformed one, which are the original meshes. And then we do a surface deform. And of course, this doesn't work. Also, sorry, we are doing these unpacked primes, unpacked primes, as you can see. So we don't want to do that. Let's create in here another null. And I'm gonna edit this in here. So now we are doing on real geometry, and when we deform, we should have something like this. Um, what else we will do in here? We will do another attribute blur. So attribute blur, just to even out the surface and keep the the border points unchanged. So we're just smoothing out the the polygons. 
so we have an easier time when we try to, to create displacement and textures from this. So then we go back to pack and we do the moving back to the origin or to the initial position by unpack. We do the UVs and we do an exploded view. And of course we need to reverse this. And as you can see, now we don't have that issue on the corners. So guys, this was a quick lesson, like uh, fixing what we did uh, last time. In the next part, we will continue on this project, if you guys are interested. But for today, that's what we have. So let's just make sure we don't have inverted UVs. Well, that doesn't matter too much. We can easily revert them back later. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.